This lab is the reference and confirmatory laboratory for hemoglobinopathies for the state of Tennessee, any baby that tests positive for a hemoglobin disorder at birth, automatically the sample will be sent to us to produce the final diagnosis. The Meharry Sickle Cell Center is probably one of the longest standing programs at Meharry. It's five decades, it's a long time. We get samples from all over the world, Africa, South America, and of course the state of Tennessee, sometimes some nearby states for final diagnosis. Like I said, we do the confirmation to the newborn screening, and then people can call in, call and make an appointment to come in and be tested, like just off of the street. We perform those tests for free. Our sickle cell population is marginalized. It's very hard for our patients to get jobs. A lot live below the poverty level just because they can't work on a regular basis. Sickle cell is systematic. It affects every system in the body because of blood flow. And the center was created in 1972 when President Nixon signed the Sickle Cell Anemia Control Act. Actually, Meharry, before 1972, was doing a screening for sickle cell because primarily affected African Americans and Meharry being an HBCU put an emphasis on testing and providing clinical care to sickle cell. At first, I was always tired and always in pain and uh, my legs was weak, and then I hurt sometimes all over my body, from my ears to my toes. I just wanted to ride up and down the block like my friends, and I could never make it. I could just, like, make it two, three houses. You know, watching my mother, when I look back, I know that she had it really bad. She was actually in the hospital a lot, and she was in a lot of pain a lot, you know, compared to my brother, who also suffered from sickle cell disease. My brother wanted to, his, his big dream, <laughs> he wanted to go work for FedEx. And I remember after he, after he graduated, and he was just like, you know, I just don't think that I can do it. And it crushed me, because, you know, he was like, I'm, you know, I'm, you know, it's too much lifting, it's gonna be too much, you know, and I was just like, <sighs> On a day-to-day -day basis with sickle cell, because the red blood cells clot, you won't be able to see. You know, you will have pain. Your liver might not work. Your kidneys might not work. Your heart might stop working. You might have a stroke at any given time because those cells have clotted and there's no blood flow to your brain. You're constantly living with the thought that what system is not gonna work today? And that's a painful way to live. the sickle cell center camp that we went on once a year for sickle cell people and trait people, teaching us about drinking water, eating vegetables, exercise. A lot of us can't exercise, but we can do small exercises like walk, that your kids play more, you know, just activities, because it helps the blood flow in your arteries. Because a lot of times when sickle cell kids just sit there, you, 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 your blood clots, and that's how they go into a crisis. Dr. Wolf was like a daddy to me instead of a doctor because he made me get off my butt and try stuff instead of just listening to him and just sitting there. <laughs> and I would try and I even got better on my bike, my skateboard. If you ask somebody, have you heard of MS? Oh yeah, absolutely. They may not know specifically, but they've at least heard of it. A lot of times with these moms, they've never heard of it. This disease was one of the first molecular diseases identified at the gene level over 70 years ago. But if we compare to other genetic diseases, really it didn't have the same funding. We look at genetic disorders, if you compare or you research the money given to sickle cell clinics and sickle cell foundations, it's like tenfold to what's given to sickle cell. And sickle cell has been around for a really, really, really long time. I feel like we should have found a cure for it, but because of the population, the money's not put into it. Education and testing go hand in hand. We need more healthcare providers that are trained on how to manage these disorders. Parents can't do it all, so we need the sickle cell center to teach us. That's the second parent, and they're teaching us about sickle cell and how to fight it and go through life and better deal with it. And now I can deal with it. I'm not ashamed of it. I'm not scared of it. 
I'm normal. Might not be on a piece of paper, but I'm very normal, I'm very strong. I can run, I can work out, I can do anything I want to. Sickle cell patients are living longer, which is wonderful. Um, you know, losing my mom at 16 was really hard, but I'm so thankful for the strides that are being made now. I'm thankful for the Meharry Sickle Cell Center. My experience, I've been to a lot of doctors, but success and doctors are just, I don't know, they're more like friends and doctors. I love my hair. I love it. I think I wouldn't be alive if it wasn't for my hair.